I heard it was a great, a great Sunday last week on Pentecost Sunday. I had the opportunity to uh, um, a friend of ours, the pastors of a church in Sweetwater, two hours and 45 minutes from here. And uh, we got invited to speak for his 15th anniversary. And uh, we don't take a whole lot of uh, preaching engagements outside of, uh, of uh, church, but uh, it was kind of a special opportunity. So we just, I knew it was in great hands with uh, N4, Nick IV, uh, sharing about Pentecost. But I'm going to, I'm probably going to, uh, this, will, this will be part of my Pentecost Sunday. I didn't preach Pentecost Sunday last week. I preached about legacy and living a life of, of legacy. And, uh, but this morning, for the next few moments, I want to talk about the Holy Spirit, full charge. There it is, yeah. The Holy Spirit, full charge. And I just, I'm, I'm in the process of, of attaining some things for the Ecuador trip that's coming up. And so uh, one of the things I, I wanted to get was a, uh, a solar panel, a, a, a solar paneled um, battery charger that will charge uh, in the middle of the jungle um, that won't, I won't have to plug into a generator or whatever. And so uh, I, I've seen these pictures about being fully charged and it kind of just struck my, struck my spirit this past week about the idea of being fully charged in the Holy Ghost, to have everything that God has for us. And um, <clears throat> we know for a fact that Jesus went to heaven to send the Spirit. We know that, you know, it's better for him to go that he told the disciples because the Comforter's gonna come, the Holy Spirit's going to come. And uh, for some Pentecost, it's uh, when you hear the word Pentecost, some, when you hear the word Pentecostal, some people are more, more uh, uh, they feel better about the word uh, uh, charismatic or charisma. But Pentecost is expressive, uh, charismatic, loud, shouting, expressive in worship. Anybody ever been there before? Anybody going to help me this morning? I need some major help on this Memorial uh, Day weekend. Uh, prophetic. Uh, tell it like it is. Jericho marches. How many ever been a part of a Jericho march? How many have no idea what I'm talking about as far as the Jericho march, all right? That means we just start marching around and around. It might be the building, it might be the room. Um, camp meeting style, a little bit of hype, and uh, maybe just a little crazy every now and then. The charismatic Pentecostal church, uh, some people call it the granola church, full of fruits, nuts, and flakes. Um, uh, for others, in order to be Pentecostal, uh, they have to do uh, covering everything, holiness on the outward. But for Pentecostalism, uh, <clears throat> it is less about the outward expression. And some believe that God will only move uh, if there is outward sacrifice. But in Acts chapter uh, 2, verse 38, Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the Holy Spirit. Um, one way, uh, sign language, I've said it a hundred times, but the, the, I don't know uh, <clears throat> American sign language, but I do know, know this one, one area where you have three in one. Uh, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the triune uh, Godhead. Uh, they're all together. <clears throat> and the promise is for you, verse 39, and you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. It's for everyone. <clears throat> this combats those who say it was only for the 120 in the room. Uh, this combats uh, those who say it's only for a select few. The baptism and the power of the Holy Spirit, ready for this, is for everyone. For every one of us in this room, those watching online, outside this room, it's for every one. Acts uh, 2, th uh, 37, uh, now when they heard this, they were uh, cut to the heart. <clears throat> and scripture tells us that they received the Holy Spirit. And so this, uh, this message today, this, this idea today, this thought about being fully charged, being fully aware, being fully used of the Lord, it's a, it's a, a message of, of spirit, of wisdom. Uh, it's for some, it's for knowledge, faith gifts of healing by that of, uh, of uh, one spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To some, it's about prophecy. To some, it's about distinguishing between spirits. For some, it's speaking in different kinds of tongues. And for still others, the interpretation of tongues. And so we know about the gift of, of the Holy Spirit. We know about the gift uh, to all of us uh, here on, the, on this day. And so I want to take you to an uh, incredible story out of the book of, book of Acts in Acts chapter 8, verse 12. But when 
they believed Philip as he proclaimed the good news of the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ. They were baptized, both men and women. Simon himself believed and was baptized, and he followed Philip everywhere, astonished by the great signs and miracles he saw. Verse 14, then the apostle in Jerusalem, apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God. So understand, there were different pockets that were finally um, allowing the expression of what Christ had done in their lives, in their homes, in their town, um, accepted the word of God and sent Peter and John to Samaria. When they arrived, they prayed for the new believers that they might receive, I want you to get this, they prayed for the new believers that they might receive the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit had not yet come on any of them. And so this is kind of a, we're not going to go deep into this this morning, but for those who say, um, you know, once you accept the Lord, you receive the Holy Spirit. Now, there's, there, that's partially true, but the greater partial, partial true is that there was a moment here where they had accepted the Lord. They prayed uh, for new believers. Um, <clears throat> when they arrived, they prayed for the new believers that they might receive the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit had not yet come on them. They had simply been baptized in the name of the Lord. Verse 17, then Peter and John placed their hands on them and they received what? The Holy Spirit. So how do you know they received the Holy Spirit? Something happened to them. Um, scripture uh, infers that they spoke in another language. They spoke in tongues. And so I know for some, that might be a weird thing. For some, that might be something that you're, con you know, it's not like, well, I can, I'm okay with the Father. I'm okay with the Son. But that Holy Ghost stuff, I'm not quite sure. You know, I'm afraid of that ghost, you know. Um, but we're not afraid of the ghost. We're, we're not afraid of the Holy Spirit. We're not afraid of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We're not afraid of the power that comes with it. Even as a guy like Stacey Daniels gets up here and testifies, there's no uh, uh, inhibition to what God has done in his life and what God is doing through the power of God the Father and the Holy Spirit, God the Son. Acts chapter 8, verse 4. Those who had been scattered preached the word whenever they went. Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah there. When the crowds heard Philip and saw the signs he performed, they all paid close attention to what he had said, for with shrieks, impure spirits came out of many, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was great joy in the city. Now, I'll just, let me just say this on the side, and, and again, uh, I just want you, to, I want you to be okay with this, and I want you to just understand that sometimes deliverance, sometimes freedom ministry, sometimes when, when uh, we pray for people, it's not like just this quiet little, uh, quiet little show. Even scripture tells us here that there was, uh, there was these, this moment that uh, uh, people were moved. There, were, there was uh, impure spirits that came out uh, during that time. Uh, Acts chapter 8, verse 20, 26, moving ahead. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down to Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way, he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of uh, Kandik, uh, means uh, queen of, of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah, the prophet. And the spirit told Philip, go to the chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit next to him. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearers is silent. So he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived justice, who can speak uh, of his descendants, for his life was taken from earth. The eunuch asked Philip, and we're talking about divine interruptions here, even as uh, Stacy shared earlier. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Was it Isaiah, or was he talking about someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to the, uh, some water, and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What can stand in the way of me being baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and, and, bapt 
and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, and this is the, this is the, the cool Holy Ghost uh, encounter um, translation moment. But when they came, <clears throat> the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at uh, Astos and traveled about preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. Father, these next few moments, Lord, as we just kind of navigate moments of obedience, moments of hearing, moments of seeing, Lord, that you would truly speak through our hearts. We pray this in your powerful name of Jesus. Amen. A number of years ago, as I I shared earlier, we're headed to uh, Ecuador. Back in 1995 was my first trip to the Amazon, to the jungle. And uh, we we had a bunch of students with us, and... um, they had, they had some boats, we were on a river, and uh, we were told that we were going to a place that had never had someone of our skin color, someone of, of the magnitude of a, we were going to do a crusade meeting, I was going to speak that night, and uh, this is the first time they saw white people in this particular area. It was way down a river. It was, it was you know, astonishing, it was invigorating, it was one of those moments of, I can't believe uh, what, what God could do here, these students, myself, and so here we are, we're, we're, we're traveling down, I mean, ready to, ready to lay everything on the ground, everything there on the field, to, to give them hope, share with them about Jesus, they had never had a, a moment like this before, and um, uh, I saw some indigenous people, local people of the area, they were walking along, and next thing I know, they reached in their pocket, and they pulled out their cell phone in this moment. And I thought, wow, this, this is not the picture I, I thought here. You know, <laughs> we would be in the middle of nowhere, and uh, they, they got their cell phone out, you know, and they're playing, they're, they're playing uh, uh, Tetris, you know, and, 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 and all that. But, um, you know, it's amazing sometimes when we think we're in moments that we think have to be exclusively, you know, all about this moment, this, this, this uh, moment that just kind of just swells up and all of a sudden, boom, uh, there it is. And in that moment, it was a uh, uh, unique journey. Um, in this story about Philip, the Ethiopians were considered to live at the end of the world, and uh, they were about a thousand miles away. So this, this particular man was on quite the journey. It probably took him about five months of a journey to be there and to uh, um, have gotten to Jerusalem. And this is how uh, Philip is introduced to us in this portion of scripture. Philip was a man just like you, just like me. Uh, it took uh, the word and applied it. He took what he heard from Jesus. He took what he heard from the disciples. And in Acts chapter 6, this man full of the Holy Spirit, um, God used, brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you, Acts 6, 3. Uh, you who are known to be full of spirit and wisdom. Now, here's a question for you this morning. Just a simple question. Um, how many here in this room are known to be full of spirit and wisdom? Uh, you know, I, I don't know if ever, anybody's ever kind of coincide. You know, um, there's Pastor Nick. He's full of spirit and wisdom. You know, or there's Don. You know, he's full of spirit and wisdom. But here in this moment, Philip is considered to be full of spirit and wisdom. And so uh, uh, this morning, for the next few moments, we're going to hear about this man who is full of wisdom and uh, a spirit. And uh, I don't know if Nick said this last week, or I think I I said you should say this, or didn't didn't say this, but I want you to get this. The Holy Spirit does not want weekend visitation rights. The Holy Spirit wants full custody of your life today. I just wanted you to get that. You know, it's a shame what happens with divorce and, and, and children and, and, you know, who, who gets them on what weekends and all that. But just know today that when you accept the Lord as your personal Savior, it comes with the triune uh, uh, Godhead. It comes with the Spirit. It comes with all that goes with it. But if you're taking notes this morning, the Holy Spirit uh, full charged so that we can receive guidance receive guidance. One of the things that stands out is how God guides his own. One of the things that stands out is how God just continues to direct us and lead us. All of God's promises are yes and amen. He guides my footsteps. Can you, can you apply that to your life? Does God, um, uh, direct your footsteps? And he should direct your footsteps, just like he directs my footsteps every day, every moment. The Holy Spirit guides us through difficult times, uh, Isaiah 30, 21, whether you turn to the right or turn to the left, 
your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in it. I can't tell you how many times I've prayed that over someone and just to uh, encourage them to recollect, to believe, to hear when the Holy Spirit whispers. And, um, you know, I shared a few weeks ago this idea. I shared about the, the first time I met Kim and how their... Uh, uh, I was very, very awkward. I'm still very awkward, but I was very awkward in that moment. But finally, I got the courage to ask her out. And uh, she happened to be dating somebody at the time. And so I had to pause on that and then ask her out again. And, uh, but the, in that awkward moment, awkwardness turned into awesomeness, ultimately. 34 years this year, uh, th- I mean, 34 years m- married uh, th- this year, right? right? Yeah. And, uh, and, and here we are. And I just want to, if you forget everything else I say, and I know I said a few weeks ago, but listen, hearing and believing and following the Holy Spirit sometimes seems awkward. It may really seem awkward. It may seem awkward to go up to that person in the, uh, uh, in, in the mall. It may seem awkward to go up to that person that uh, the Lord put on your heart just to bless or to encourage somehow, some way. But in the awkwardness, it can really turn awesome. Uh, for, for that matter. Anybody with me this morning? Uh, in, in those moments, you can receive guidance. Um, turn to the left, turn to the right. The Holy Spirit guides us through difficult times, through hardships, through the unpleasant. Philip was enjoying a good ministry. He was one of the seven uh, appointed uh, Greek speakers at the time to care for widows. Uh, Stephen had just been martyred, and great persecution came against the church. But the Holy Spirit used these men and these people. Overnight, Philip, this man of God, went from a busboy to Billy Graham. Think about that. He went from this, 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 this small situation to a national platform, if you could say it that way. And when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, difficult times won't break you. They will make you. Somebody needs to receive that this morning. Difficult times won't break you. They will make you. Not everything in life is heaven sent, but heaven used. Think about that. In John 16, 33, I've told you these things that you, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have, I hate it, trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Things change. Health changes. Economies change. Governments change. Moments change. Sometimes these troubles push us further and further from the possibilities we want to embrace. But I can tell you what, God sees us through. A number of weeks ago, um, we hosted a, uh, I I think uh, Nick spoke to it last week, uh, Church Multiplication uh, Network launch, CMN launch. And there were 19 um, churches, 19 brand new pastors who were, Stepping out to launch a church all around this country. Uh, four, of them, four of them were going to be here in Tennessee alone. But um, here they were all together. And so uh, Kim and I had the opportunity. They asked us to speak on the opening night. And so our worship team led worship. It was a, it was a, a great night. And then, and then uh, Kim and I, uh, they, we, we kind of got our directions crossed a little bit of what we were supposed to speak about or not speak about. But we ended up speaking about stuff, and I guess it went over well. Uh, but in the moment, they wanted to know some of the good, the bad, the ugly, um, some of the things we've taken away after all these years of ministry. And um, one of the things I shared that a number of years ago, and uh, I won't go into detail, and some of you are, are very uh, <clears throat> apt on what happened, but I happened to try, along with someone else in this, in this church, to help a business guy. And um, in the course of helping this particular person, um, it, it was kind of like I, I kept on getting pulled down further and further. My faith would be questioned in the process. And at the end of it all, we found ourselves um, in some major, major debt. And uh, it, was, it was horrible, absolutely horrible. Next thing you know, uh, I was, on the <clears throat> I was, in, I was uh, uh, considered a victim uh, by the uh, government, the federal government, and I became a witness in the process of identity theft and all that. That's, that's, the, that's the short story of, of something crazy. And I can tell you, during that time, how many of you ever gone through a bad time before? Maybe not to that magnitude. Anybody here? You've gone through a bad time, all right? So during that time, it was horrible. I got to tell you, it was like the worst thing ever, trying to help. You know, here we are here. Should I have not done that? Should I have not done this? And, and uh, all that, all that to say, in this world, we will have trouble. 
And all I knew to do was pray to the Lord. All I knew to, do, knew, knew to do was seek the Lord and get a word from the Lord that everything was going to be all right. Though it didn't seem that way. In fact, it took me years um, to feel okay to go to the mailbox at my house because of years before, almost post-traumatic stress of, of will there be another collection um, letter in the mail? You know, will I get a, who's calling me on this number? I don't know this number. I'm not going to answer it. But thank the Lord after all that time and persevering through it, do you know that God restored everything? Yeah. God restored my credit. God turned everything around in those days. And you know what? If God can do it for me, yeah. in this world you may have some troubles, but he will guide you through those moments. Yeah. He'll guide you through those difficult times. Even though, i got, I got to tell you, in my, in my heart of hearts, <clears throat> I could not imagine myself having to testify with 12 jurors and uh, attorneys and all those kind of things. In fact, to this day, uh, I'm still unnerved about thinking about it. But in those times, God equips and God strengthens. Somebody hear me this morning. God will equip you. God will strengthen you. And God will give you wisdom beyond your years to make it through a difficult time. Can I get a witness this morning? The Holy Spirit guides through supernatural encounters. Thank you. An angel giving Philip marching orders. Philip received um, through an angel. No angel sent from God will ever add to Scripture or say something different than what Scripture says. And um, how many have ever seen an angel before? Has anybody? Anybody experienced? I've seen a few. The first one was my wife. And, uh, but so, <clears throat> come on, work with me this morning. Work with me this morning. The Holy Spirit guides us through supernatural encounters. Listen, you can have a supernatural encounter. Desire a supernatural encounter. Desire everything that God has for you. Do not limit. Take the limits off God this morning. Hear this on this uh, week after Pentecost Sunday, all right? Take the limits off God and his spirit. Let him speak to you. Let him, let him give you a vision uh, during the day and dreams in the night. Give him that opportunity. <clears throat> there are people who have told me they've seen angels here in this place. And uh, one, one particular person who, was, who happened to be a, a seer, just really could uh, point this out, they saw, said they saw like 15 angels standing, but couldn't see like their whole bodies, but finally went up to one of them and asked them, why are you here in this building, in this, in this service? And the answer to them was this, we were invited to be here. We're here because we were asked to be here. Do you ask the Lord in your life every day? Do you purpose that he be in your pursuit, in your life, when you're driving, when you're ministering, when you're working? The supernatural. God gives dreams, visions, prophecies, interpretations, revelations uh, that follow messages in tongues. And this should be part of our normal life. This is part of the normal life. And if not, could it be, and here's the, here's the, here's the, do I receive this or not? Could it be that we're not fully charged? Could it be that we, we've not fully embraced all that God has for us? At the end of the story, Philip is translated supernaturally to another place 20 miles away. Now, who thought they were going to show up in church on Memorial Day weekend and I was going to talk about translation, all right? Think about that. He was in one place and Scripture says, when, when the eunuch came, comes up out of the water, Philip is gone, and it insinuates in scriptures that he's 20 miles away. Now, I just wanted you to catch this this morning. Well, it could be that that was left out of scripture, and he just got on his horse and uh, rode off, and then 20 miles later, so it could be this, but it could be that he was translated. It could be that he was picked up from one place to another place. I've always wondered, I've always been inquisitive about that. You know, uh, if I, I need to get somewhere here, get somewhere there. My, my Aunt Frida, years ago, she taught Sunday school class. We were in New Jersey, Pennington, New Jersey. And um, I remember sharing a story of, uh, and I'll remember to this day, she shared a lot of stories, but this one particular story, there was a storm, a uh, really bad storm, and there was a bridge that she needed to get across. And uh, she was running late. And um, she shares this story, uh, and again, maybe she left something out, but it really uh, created great faith inside of me that, that she realized that in this moment, I said, well, how'd you get across the other side? I was a little guy. How'd you get across the other side? 
got across to the other side? She's like, I'm not quite sure. I just made it to the other side. I was, I don't know if I was nine years old, 10 years old, and she never told me how she got to the other side, but she got to the other side. And in that moment, I remember thinking, remember, remember down the road, hearing about Philip and the possibilities that God moved her supernaturally. Do, do we believe God can move supernaturally this morning? Do we believe that he can do anything? The Holy Spirit's voice speaks to us. The Holy Spirit spoke within and told to go, to catch up to the chariot. Discerning the voice is something that we grow in over time. One way, <clears throat> one way you can know if it's the Holy Spirit speaking to you, this is, worth, this is worth the price of admission this morning. Are you ready for this? One way that you can know the Holy Spirit is speaking to you is if what you heard makes you go, say what? <laughs> really? That's supposed to be funny. And three of you laughed. And uh, man, tough crowd this morning, all right? Reminds you that God's ideas are always big ideas. Just get that this morning. God's ideas are always bigger than we think. Be filled with the Holy Spirit, and you are better to discern the Spirit. You be fully charged, you can discern the Spirit. You know, uniquely, uh, I'm going to step out, and, and, and I have no idea. And, I, and I, this could be a total, you know what, I just need to work on that. And I'm a working project. I just want you to know that. Bill Gothard, years ago, this great um, teacher, he used to have these buttons with, with letters. Please be patient. God isn't finished with me yet. And so last, uh, yesterday, um, while I was uh, going, over, going over the message and, and just thinking, I had this name drop in my spirit, this, th somebody's name. And uh, I have no idea if somebody here is in this room or watching online. And, uh, and I, even this morning during worship, I was like, you know, should I, sh should I share this or should I not share it? And, um, but it was very specific of, of a person. And, me, and again, the easy thing would be the, the, the aha moment or okay moment. Oh, they're watching online. I'll hear from them this week type of deal. But um, it was very specific that there was, there was somebody and the, the Lord gave me a name, um, which, is, which is crazy, right? Isn't that crazy? Everybody say crazy. Come on. It was, you know, he gave me a name, you know? And, uh, and I don't know if there is someone here by that name, but the person's name was Susan. Is there, is there a Susan in the room this morning? Just out of curiosity, anybody with the name Susan? And very possibly there, there isn't. So I'm just taking a step of faith. I may miss it, but God never does. But there was somebody named Susan, and, um, and I thought to myself, I don't know anybody named Susan. Uh, in the top of my head, I, knew, I know somebody uh, who used to be here. And, um, but even in this moment, and, and whether you're watching online, I don't know what camera's on or not, but uh, if you are Susan, I felt the Lord say that there was um, a complete healing coming, coming to you in, in that moment. And uh, I could just do a, I couldn't, now, if I wanted to, to, to save the moment of like, oh, I missed it here, I could have said, hey, is there anybody in here that needs healing this morning? You know, type of deal. But I felt very specific on that. Now, your name may not be Susan. Uh, your, main, your name uh, may not even rhyme with Susan, have the first the letter, uh, S, you know, uh, middle name, or what they called you growing up. But when it comes down to it, how many know that God wants to heal? God is a healer. God is a God of tur that turns things around. But if indeed that Susan is watching at some point, whether right now or later on in the week when it's replayed on, on uh, the interweb, internet, that I truly believe that there is total healing for this person. Now, Awkward? Awkward? Could be awesome in those moments. And I, I, I did this purposely. Maybe the Lord just had me do this this morning purposely in the, in the capacity that if I'm willing to do that, to step out in the moment, would you be willing to step out when you're in Target, when you're in a parking lot, when you're pumping gas, when you're in a moment about obedience? Before Philip ever saw the angel or was airlifted to another place, here's the key to his life. He was obedient. He was obedient to the will of God through the word of God. He took care of orphans and widows in Jerusalem. He was speaking in Samaria often. Philip was obedient to the general word of God. In Proverbs 3, verse 5, it reminds us this. To trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. In all your ways, 
he will direct your highways. In all your footpaths, in all the steps that you take, acknowledge him in your daily routine. Acknowledge him in your life. Acknowledge him and direct him even in major decisions that you make. Friends, if you want more guidance in life, follow what's already been written through the word of God. If you want more guidance, you want more direction, these are general and they're specific. You know, wouldn't it be great? Uh, you wake up and, and the Lord says, you know, okay, I want you to get in your car. I want you to go to this street. So you put it in your map quest or you put it in wherever you go there. Uh, I, want, I want you to be here. But there's also a specific or general. The Holy Spirit guides us proportionate to our obedience. The more we obey, the more God guides. The less we obey, the less God guides. The more we're willing to say, God, lead me. God, uh, establish me. God, use me. If you remember, Philip was leading a revival in Samaria. So Philip is in the middle of a revival. Billy Graham, in the middle of this incredible thing going on, and God calls him out of that meeting to go to a desolate place, to go somewhere that it didn't even, it didn't even matter, to go somewhere that was, he, he didn't know if anyone was going to be there, in the middle of the desert at a high noon, no less. It's hot. Anybody ever been to the desert before? Any, anybody? How about the beach? How many want to go to the beach? Huh? <clears throat> High noon south, Philip. Maybe Philip was saying, let me get this straight. You want me to leave this revival and travel down this road? You want me to leave what's going on great right here and travel down this road? The obedience versus the disobedience. I'm sure all of us have moments where we heard the Lord and the longer we walked away from hearing the Lord, the voice got distant. The voice got silent. I, um, in, in, my, uh, in my car, there's, a, um, there's the maps. But then just recently, uh, I don't know how it got switched over, but there's this thing called Waves, 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 Waves. And, um, and so it, it's funny because it doesn't, even, it doesn't even have to be on. Like I don't, I don't even have to acknowledge it. And it'll speak over, it'll come on if a radio is playing. Um, even if, not, if I didn't punch a destination in, it'll still speak to me. And it'll say, hey, there's traffic coming up. Hey, there's these moments coming up. And it reminds me, all the time when I hear that thing, is, through the, is the power of the Holy Spirit that can speak to us, that can download to us, that can direct us. And it comes down to us willing to be obedient. The Holy Spirit, full charge to receive guidance. Number two, the Holy Spirit, full charge, to serve anyone, anywhere, at any time. Anyone, anywhere, at any time. The Holy Spirit pours love in our hearts for all people. God has called us to serve one another. I want you to, I want you to realize that today. One of the neat things we did a few weeks ago was we uh, uh, created 75 uh, meals or, or boxes full of meals, multi, multiple meals to be handed out, to be given to, to many. And we plan on doing that he, even more in, in the future. And uh, I think in another month, we have another date on the calendar that we're going to do it again. And then we're going to do it again. And then we're going to do it again. God's called us to care. God's called us to have open hearts. Romans 5, 5, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Why do we serve people? Because of the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Philip served the widows, Samaritans, sworn enemies of uh, the Jews during those times. But God's called us to love our enemies. Matthew 5, 43. You have heard that it is said, love your neighbors and hate your enemies. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. Persecute, oh, that's a big word. How about somebody you just don't get along with? Someone who's maybe said something or some, some whatever. I tell you what, you want to change? You want to change your life? You want to change your mindset? Pray for those who have come against you. There, 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 there's something to walk away with this morning, right? Pray for those through the power of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> the Ethiopian official was of a different race, a different league. He was wealthy. He was important. He wasn't necessarily up to Philip's uh, status or stature, but God used him mightily. 
and God will use us mightily. Listen for promptings. Imagine if Philip had delayed for one moment. Maybe the eunuch would have just been sitting there reading and no one was there to interpret that scripture. What will you interpret this upcoming week? What will you uh, come along and solidify in what God is already stirring in the heart of people? You know, we're in, a, we're in a season in this land. We're in a season of 2024, <clears throat> and we're in a season of uh, crazy politics. We're in a season of, of uh, uh, crazy economy, crazy inflation, and all these pieces. And we keep hearing it over. And when I say we, many, many of the that are in ministry, many pastors. You know, there are people that continue to move to, to Tennessee, to Nashville, Tennessee, uh, to this area, to Williamson County, to Murray County, to Maury County, Murray County, however you want to say it. Um, they continue to move and move, but they feel God calling them here. I truly believe that there is a setup for a major move of God. But the question is, what does it look like? I think many of us are waiting for this, you know, uh, uh, this moment of, you know, oh, things are going to be different. Obedience. Obedience now, obedience in the small, obedience in the, in, in the little, obedience in following up and following through what God speaks even right now. God yanked a revivalist, Philip, to go after one soul. Who is the one soul? Who is the one person that will, God will put you in their pathway? Catching people, ministering to people, guess what? Takes effort just like it took you effort to come to church this morning. It'll take effort to love. It'll take effort to encourage. And you know where you start? Start within your own family. Start with, start with uh, um, making things right within your own family, your siblings, your parents, your aunts, your uncles. Start somewhere. God will give you everything you need. The Holy Spirit, full charge to receive guidance. The Holy Spirit, full charge to serve anyone, anywhere, at any time. And third, the Holy Spirit, full charge. You become a giver. You become a giver. Now don't get, don't, we already received the offering this morning, so don't get, don't, don't get nervous here for a minute. We're not receiving any more uh, offering, whatever it is. But what, I'm, what I want to share here is giving of ourselves. Giving of our time. Giving of a phone call. Giving of just expressing love, expressing concern, expressing God spoke to me, just wanted to call you and pray with you, walk through it with you. Philip's spirit-inspired witness was effective. The Ethiopian received Jesus, and as they came to the last oasis in Israel, Philip shows up, and he's used mightily. The Ethiopian he says, what prevents me from being baptized now? I want, I, want the, I want it all. I want everything. He was baptized. He was changed. And Philip, on Memorial Day weekend, 2024, tuck it away. He was translated. He was moved from point A to point B. I believe that God carried him. That's truly what I believe. Does that sound crazy? Yes. Does that sound supernatural? Yes. Does that sound amazing? Absolutely. But that's the God that I serve. That's the God that I wake up to every morning. It's the God that I go to sleep with on my mind, in my heart, every night. The God who gives dreams. The God who gives vision. The God who gives the power to turn situations around. The Holy Spirit fell down in that moment. The Ethiopian went home filled and he took the gospel to the ends of the earth. All because he was willing to be obedient. You might have missed this earlier, and, uh, but I, 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 did, I did actually say this. Philip was a common man, just like you and me. He was just a common man that he just kind of rose in the ranks. You need me to teach? You need me to go on an outreach? You need me to go to Ecuador? You need me to uh, hand out food? That's who Philip was. He was just being used with what was before him. Just being willing. You know what? On the job, you know what? I may work here, but I'm a believer first. I'm a believer first. You know what? And I remember, I remember one morning, Stacy, that uh, I remember I showed up to, uh, to work out, and uh, <clears throat> I remember I was so troubled about something. 
something that happened within, within the body, and uh, this is years ago, something happened in the, in the body, and uh, I remember, uh, I didn't say anything to you, but uh, I remember you looking at me, and uh, I, just the honor and the respect, I mean, you've, you, you've always called me pastor, you know, well, pastor, and uh, you said, pastor, uh, I can tell something's, something's going on right now, and uh, um, I'd like just to pray for you in this moment. Here we are at this huge gym, here we are with, with you know, all kinds of other people around. And, and, uh, but here was a man who was willing to say, you know what? I can do something right now. Yeah. That I could step in obedience. Remember that moment? Remember that morning? It, w- it was like, you know, it was, it was just crazy. Just crazy in that moment. And I remember God ministered to me. So much so that I'm sharing it today. Of the willing to be obedient in those moments. Awkward? Awesome. Awkward, Susan, Susan, is Susan here? <laughs> anybody got a middle name, Susan? Got a, anybody related to somebody, Susan? <laughs> somebody, Susan, work for you? Or, uh, awkward, but awesome. So my question this morning is, are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Are you charged up? <clears throat> are you fully charged? I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a, I hate when my phone only has so much, you know, 75%. It's kind of like, I need to find something to plug it in. I always want that full charge. I don't know, anybody else like that? Is it just me? Just want that full charge. And I can't wait to get this solar power, powered battery charger, you know. I can do it anywhere, anytime. Just kind of stick it in the, in, the, uh, in the window of the car. Here comes the sun. Boom. But would his spirit even lead us to change it in our own lives that you're fully charged? That everything's, everything's there. Although, you know, sometimes I, I carry a, a battery charger, the wire sticking out here, you know, it's in my back pocket, it's, it's hanging out because I, I want to see it fully charged. I've, I've had it at tables before uh, uh, because circles are better than rows in our small groups. And, and uh, as awkward as it is, I want that full charge. What is the awkward moment in your life? What is the awkward moment this weekend, 2024, that maybe you need to release? Maybe it's the, maybe it's the, the, the moment of, you know, there are other, you know the, the enemy will get in your mind and say, you know what, this is for someone else to do. The enemy will get in your mind saying, you're not good enough to do this. The enemy will get in your mind saying that, you know what, that's not part of your spiritual gifting. And yet he equips over and over again. Are you filling others up? You know, a big buzzword, and I'll close with this. Worship team, come on up. A big buzzword years ago within ministry. I might be opening a can of worms, but I'll just go go for it. You'll be gracious to me. The big buzzword out of a, a huge revival that was taking place that a lot of the church um, kind of got cockeyed over, kind of got, you know, uh, you know, this is, this is just weird. And it was this one word and, uh, it was the word impartation. Have you ever heard the word impartation? And, uh, some people take it to extremes as if, as if I can, if I pray for rebel, as if I could give rebel something, I look at it as through the power of the Holy Spirit, I can impart whatever it is whether it's healing, whether it's, it's not coming from Nick Serban, it's coming from the Father above. But it kind of got, kind of got out of whack because people are saying, you know, here's this great uh, ministry revivalist and I'm going to impart what I have into Kwame or I'm going to impart what I have into John or, or Mary Jo. But when it all comes down to it, do you realize of the power you have? Guess what? I've imparted a whole lot into four boys I have. I've imparted a whole lot into those who I've, rub shoulders with, and vice versa, of iron sharpening iron. And in moments like today, on this Memorial Day weekend, you receive guidance, you serve anyone, anywhere, at any time, and you become a giver. So here's a question. What does the Holy Spirit speak into you? What are some areas of surrender? Do you feel half full? Do you feel half empty? Are you open to his promptings? Are you willing to 
be stretched even this day. I said earlier, I said, uh, a meeting that's out of order is one. It's not, it's not about Jericho marches or the Holy Spirit car wash. Have you ever seen this before? Uh, no, we'll talk later. All right. But it comes down to people getting saved, people getting delivered, people getting changed in his likeness for his purpose. He's here today in our midst. And what greater opportunity we could have but to pause in his presence, say, Lord, do whatever you want in my life. Change me, use me, direct me, help me to be the mighty man of God, the mighty woman of God you've called me to be. Would you stand with me this morning?